The iPad Pro has a keyboard and a pen, so naturally people are comparing it to Microsoft's Surface. But for artists, these devices could not be more different. First off, the Surface is a laptop replacement. It might be all that you need. The iPad Pro, on the other hand, feels more like a companion product to me. What I mean by that is it's not going to replace your laptop, but it might be the device you need to work with your laptop. Let's start by looking at the hardware for the iPad Pro. By itself, the iPad Pro is just a giant iPad. And by giant, I mean huge. It's so big that it doesn't feel natural when I just hold it to read a book or watch a movie or play games on. However, all that extra surface area is really nice for drawing. And of course, you can get a keyboard cover for it, but mine's on back order. After not having it for a few weeks, I don't think I really need it. Since I'm waiting for my keyboard, I figured I'd opt for the smart cover. Now, I only really get two angles on this, kind of the upright angle and kind of the laying downish angle. But I find that kind of downward position really nice for drawing. At first when I started drawing on it at that lower angle, I thought because it's connected with magnets, the, the force of my wrist might actually knock it off, but that hasn't happened yet after extended use. Now onto the piece la resistance, or as Apple calls it, the pencil. I'm still waiting on my pencil. <laughs> It's taking a while to get here. But for the sake of this review, I borrowed a friend's pencil for an entire day and got to see what it does. Now, since his pencil was already paired with his iPad, I thought this might be a hassle because I'm gonna have to like pair it with my iPad and whatnot, but it was super easy. I plugged it in and it just found it. It said, would you like to pair it? I said, yes, and boom, I was off to the races. No calibration, no problem, no mess. When people say that Apple products just work, this is the kind of interface they're talking about. The Apple Pencil overall is a fantastic little piece of hardware. I mean, look, I am cross-hatching on an iPad. And look, my wrist is on an iPad. Other styluses don't give you anywhere near this level of accuracy when you're drawing. So how's the pressure sensitivity? Meh. All right, I'm going to take a lot of heat for saying this, but I... It's okay. I mean, it's not bad. The problem I ran into is that the pressure sensitivity varies tremendously from app to app. It's up to the app creator to kind of implement it properly. So even though the pen might be a really great piece of hardware, finding a piece of software that kind of has the pressure that you're looking for is kind of tough. For example, the app Paper by 53, I thought was like dead on. I loved the feel of drawing in that app. Of course, the downside is that app isn't really meant to be like a hardcore drawing app. It's really kind of a sketching productivity app. So I'm not gonna create like a finished illustration in that app. Some of the apps I tried didn't recognize the pencil and didn't have pressure sensitivity even working yet. Other apps had it working in different ways. Sometimes you're at the mercy of the brush sets that they give you. Usually when I'm drawing, I like to press harder and get a thicker line. Most of the brushes that I use in Photoshop or other programs on the desktop do that for me. In the apps that I was playing around with, each one treated the brush differently. Sometimes you got a, a lighter shade of gray or brown when you press lighter. Uh, and if you press heavier, you got a deeper shade of black instead of a thinner or thicker line. It really depended on the app and the brushes that we're using. And it was kind of all across the board as far as what app did what well. In a desktop app, you have control over this because you can create your own brushes and create the sensitivity that you want. You don't necessarily have that kind of control in most apps on the iPad yet. A few weeks ago on my Surface Pro 4 review, I was very flattering of the pen. I really like that pen partly because it has a rubber tip on top. It gives it a little bit of resistance because usually you're drawing with a plastic pencil or pen or stylus on a glass screen and it's kind of slick. It doesn't feel like real paper. You don't have any resistance when you're using the pencil on the iPad. You're drawing with plastic on glass. Wacom tablets tend to come with a uh, little bit of a texture on the glass so that it actually feels a little more realistic, but nothing like that here. Before the pencil came out, I saw some video of like Pixar artists using it saying that they, uh, there was some kind of tooth to it so they could feel uh, some of that texture so it felt like real paper. I have no idea what they're talking about. And I saw several other reviews saying exactly the same thing. I put my new iPad Pro right next to my old iPad and my iPhone and just touching the surface of those devices, it's pretty clear that it's the same glass material and there's no tooth to it. It's just smooth glass. This isn't a knock against the iPad Pro, it's just that I've seen several reviews kind of repeat this statement that there's a little bit of tooth to the pencil on, on the screen and uh, from my experience, there's not. Next, I wanna talk about workflow. This is kind of a deal breaker for a lot of people. Earlier, I referred to the iPad Pro as a companion device. You can create amazing artwork on this thing now. But once you have a really nice illustration that you like, how do you crop it and post it to Dribbble or Behance 
Or how do I get the fonts that I want loaded in there so I can make the comic strip that I make? You can do a lot of those things on the iPad. It's physically possible. But the, the problem I was running into is oftentimes the app that I enjoyed drawing in was not the app that I enjoyed posting online in. Right now, the whole app ecosystem feels disjointed to me. And oftentimes it could just be a little bit frustrating to have to jump from app to app to do one or two little tasks. Not to mention the lack of a file system to kind of keep things consistent makes it a little clunky. Some some apps don't use Dropbox, some apps use just iCloud, some apps just use Adobe's Creative Cloud. So your file doesn't necessarily, it's not living in the place that you want it to live in to open it in another app. I think most people who use this and really enjoy drawing on it are probably going to take their artwork that they create and push it to the desktop to finish it, to add fonts, to complete their designs. What's nice is companies like Adobe have thought about that and they make it really easy to push your art onto the desktop. But I found this disconnect where I'd draw a little bit or a character and then I'd push it to the desktop and edit it and tweak it and add the strokes I wanted and then do a little more on the iPad and then push it to the desktop and then do a little more on the iPad and push it to the desktop. And I didn't really like that flow. It felt disjointed to me. I wanted to do more on the iPad. I ended up floating to apps like Procreate and Concepts that let me do everything on the iPad and then I just finish on the desktop so I wasn't bouncing back and forth as much. What's amazing is that Procreate is a fully featured drawing app and it only costs six dollars. No one would bat an eye if that was fifty or a hundred dollars on the desktop. All right, someone would bat an eye because artists are poor. So if you are a native Mac user, one app that you really have to check out is something called AstroPad. The idea behind AstroPad is their goal is to turn your iPad into a Wacom Cintiq tablet. More than any other app that I played with, this one has the most potential. What you're doing is it's duplicating your Mac screen on your iPad so you can open up Photoshop, Illustrator, any program that you desire and just start drawing in it. In the time that I had with the pencil and AstroPad, I wasn't able to get my pencil to uh, sync up with the app properly. Since it didn't sync up properly, I wasn't able to get the uh, pressure sensitivity working. They do have a workaround for this now uh, on their website that you can check out. Since AstroPad was built specifically for artists and illustration, there's a lot of shortcuts that they put on the screen just for us. Things like undo and increasing and decreasing your brush size and turning on your eraser are really, really handy to have right there. It also saves you from having to jump into Adobe's tiny little interface and try to like tap those little hit points with your pencil. Speaking of which, that was a problem that I had early on with my Surface Pro a couple years ago, uh, and something that Adobe has since fixed, at least on the PC. Now on the PC, there's a touch interface, which makes everything larger, easier to hit. Illustrator has its own touch mode and that sort of thing, which I've talked about quite a bit. None of that exists on the Mac yet. So as soon as you jump into this like touch world, um, it becomes kind of hard to control your Mac just because Mac OS isn't built for touch. Hopefully Adobe will be releasing these things on the Mac uh, shortly. I'd love to see it. I mean, it's already built. How hard could it be? It's probably harder than I think. One of the other things that I should mention with AstroPad is there is some latency. It is connecting via Wi-Fi, uh, so you'll see it in the menus. Oftentimes it'll blur out for a half a second before coming back in. This didn't bother me at all, but for people who are used to working on a Cintiq, it's something you should know about. So who is this for? Short answer is artists anyone who wants to draw on the iPad. But the question I get most often is, should I get this product or this product or wait for that product? And I don't know, it kind of depends on you and, and what you want. I think the iPad is great if it's not going to be your primary computer. It's also probably better for Mac people, especially if you're gonna be using something like AstroPad. If you're looking for something that's gonna completely replace your laptop, maybe the Surface Pro is a better option. It's also great for people who don't wanna deal with Windows. I'm not like a total Windows hater, don't get mad at me here. It's just that there's a learning curve to it. It took me a long time when I first got my Surface to get used to Windows. Now, if you wanna know, should I get an iPad Pro or a Wacom Cintiq? That's a harder question to answer. If you have to make that choice today, I would say, Maybe go with the Cintiq? If you have to make that choice six months from now or a year from now, the answer might be go iPad. Not to mention that the base model Cintiq is almost the same price as the iPad Pro. You can do so much more on an iPad than you can on a Cintiq. Overall, I really like the hardware. But to be completely, completely honest, I don't know if I can fully recommend this thing right now. Like I said, a year from now, I think it's gonna be great, but the software has to catch up with the hardware. There's part of me here that's kind of at a loss. In the weeks leading up to me actually using the pencil, I read so many rave reviews about it, that when I started to use it, I started to wonder, 
What's going on? Am I missing something? Am I using the wrong apps? Am I holding it wrong? Did I order the wrong iPad? Should I have gotten the one that feels like paper? I'm not saying it's a bad product at all. I would give it like a seven out of 10. That's pretty good. I write and record these reviews from the point of view of an illustrator who's been doing this for several years. And in the process, I try to put my adoration of Apple off to the side for a little bit. I hope I do a decent job of that. Good as the product might be from a hardware standpoint and as much potential as it might have in the future, it's just not there yet. So maybe it's a good thing that people can't get a pencil for another month or two because, you know, by then I think the software is gonna catch up. I'm also hoping that in the next year or so when they introduce the new iPads that I can use the pencil on a, a smaller kind of normal size iPad. Thinking back five years when the iPad was first introduced and I really, really wanted to draw on it, I loved the idea of being able to read on it, watch movies on it, uh, just surf the internet on it, and draw on it. Now I have a giant iPad that I can draw on, but I don't want to do those other things on it. So after waiting all this time, I kind of got the product I really wanted and it's kind of like not exactly what I wanted. Now I have two different iPads for two different things when what I really want is a MacBook Pro and an iPad and that's it. So yeah, that's my review. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot of uh, app reviews over the next few weeks uh, and posting them to my channel, kind of do deeper dives and really kind of figure this thing out. I'm I am really kind of excited about the hardware and everything. So subscribe uh, to follow along. And also, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, the comments get a little busy after a little while and it's hard to kind of sort through them. So sometimes if you want it answered faster, it's easier to hit me up on Twitter. But until then, thank you guys so much for watching this review.